Hi, and we're back here for the AU Solutions with our special guest, Professor Pooch, and we're talking about understanding the business as a business. And he touched on today quite a few things and different steps that he takes a lot of his clients on. And he also made some points that I would like to touch on at the moment. Um, I wanted to talk about how you said how record contracts are like bank accounts, or as one of my old professors, Webster Lewis, would say, credit and, cards. And uh, what happens, and people have to understand, you'll hear the word recoupment, recouping, recoup. In other words, any, you know, these artists are so into getting all this money. And first of all, they have to understand that money is cool up front, but they want their money back before you make any money. I've seen, I'm not going to name it, I won't name the artist, but who went out, it's a true story, it's a Philadelphia guy, uh, he bought 13 cars with his first check. Wow. The next month, he didn't have the money to put gas into any of his cars. And wow. this is when gas was fairly cheap. And people don't understand, you get paid like once every six months, uh, you know, with uh, songs from the publishers, you get paid. It, you don't get paid weekly. It's not like a salary or stuff. You have to have people around you know, hey, Pooch, you better not buy that new car today. You still have to pay your rent, your electricity. But going back to your exact subject, the recouping, they want their money back. And what they collect money, if you ever read that large paragraph in a recording contract, it's not just for your recording time or the advances they give you for this. It could be for anything, your videos, for whatever. And then if you had set it up as a business yourself, all right, you pay back maybe the thousand CDs that you put out. Right. But you can almost collect money from record number one. If you want to collect any money, really, from a major label, you better sell 250000 minimum. And my thing is, too many artists, other bragging, hey, pooch, you know, we recorded in Philly, we recorded some of them in Germany. I said, yeah, they're putting out this money for you, but they're going to want their money back. That's why it's good to learn the business of the business as well as the business of music to understand these things so you actually have a life, you know, that you can actually retire from and you can do what I've done, be in the music industry for the, well, my whole life, you know? Did I answer your question? <laughs> yes, you did. Oh, okay. Um, and I <laughs> Sometimes want... I go into tangents, you know. That's all right. It's all right. <laughs> um, and if we could also touch on, since we're on record contracts, 360 deals. Nowadays, the industry, even though they're doing, the major labels, even though they're doing less and less for the artist, and by the way, they're expecting the manager to do a bulk of the work. So make sure your manager, or if you're a manager, you really learn the industry. Okay, it's very important. They want the major labels now with the 360 deal want to be paid for everything an artist does. And that, they, they want money from your publishing, your merchandising, your live performances, anything you make money from, they want a piece of. Now, what's, people don't understand this, but, I mean, managers basically have been 360 deals. They get a piece of everything, but they're right. working with you on everything. They're helping you with the merch, they should be, with the merchandising and all these things. And you got to remember something going back a little and tying the two together, the first and second question. There's this word you're never going to see any place called cross-collateralization. I used to love to write it out on the board. It took up two <laughs> boards, the word cross-collateralization. In English, it means robbing Peter to pay Paul. So let's say your record sales are eh, but you're getting a lot of airplay money through your publishing and you're making a lot of money that way. You're not going to see that money because they're taking your publishing money to pay for your losses from the recording mm -hmm. sessions. Cross collateralization. They're going to take it from all sources. You, maybe it was good video money because they collected a bunch from YouTube, uh -huh. uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, they're going to reach in any form of income to get their money back. So remember, if you're owning everything, you have a better chance to get all your money back. Where the 360 deal, now, 
it could be limited. That's why you see somebody like me or an attorney that knows how to limit the 360. That 360 that covered everything can be knocked down to 270. Or for example, and I believe that I should be and lawyers should be creative even with contracts. That's why I enjoy doing contracts. You could be creative with it. Why can't we make it that the 360 deal is only till they get their money back and then it stops right. and then it goes into another kind of deal? You know, use your imagination and, and sometimes you're going to be, what's funny and a lot of people don't understand this, sometimes if you ask, they might say, okay, depending on how good you are, how badly they want you, you know, if they, you have a large fan base, a lot of things depend on a lot of things of how you're doing. Sometimes uh, I actually come across a lot of songwriters and um, one thing I wanted to talk about is publishing deals. What are the pros and cons about it? How do how would one a songwriter go about getting a publishing deal? Well, a lot of people think, oh, I'll just get a publishing deal. And unless you've had a bunch of hit records, nobody's going to be interested. That's point one. And that's pretty much a go ahead. But if they believe in you that much as an artist, and a lot of publishing companies are putting out stuff themselves and things like that, you might be able to get advanced in part of its publishing. But there's again why you see me or an entertainment attorney publishing. It's not just publishing. All right, we, what is publishing? Uh, the income streams of publishing. I mean, the main what you hear about are the sale of CDs, the mechanicals. You hear about airplay. That's a BMI and ASCAP when it's played on radio and things like that. And there's print, you know, like sheet music. That's the main things, but people don't think of uh, ringtones, video games, uh, radio and TV. They're called sync licensing when you sync it in a TV show or film, which is the greatest form of promotion we know. There are other ways to, to make a lot of money with publishing. Now, you can split that up. And you can split it up as, all right, You say somebody offers you $50,000, I'm making up numbers, for the publishing, your publishing rights. And you probably, that sounds like a lot of money. But think about it. How about something like, for example, all right, I'll give you a quarter of my publishing for 50000 but it ends in five years. It's only what you get for five. You could split it up in so many ways with creativity. I have this saying, you should be just as creative on the business and legal end, legally now, keep it legal, uh, as you or the artist or your artist is on the creative end. You need to be creative on both ends. Same thing when you get into actual marketing. Be creative about it. Don't do what everybody else is doing. Right. Do something unique. You see what happens all these viral videos on YouTube and stuff. Some, maybe something really different, you know, like right. that like that treadmill thing that did. It was great. It was different. It attracted a lot of attention. It was different. Be creative. Have fun with it, you know? One thing that a lot of... Um people do not understand is that artists are always the last to be paid and someone did ask us a question how do the performers get paid from their recordings if they're not a songwriter how do they go about getting the performance royalties from airplay or do they get performance royalties from airplay all right what i must state first is by airplay, we're talking about radio. Yeah, okay, that's terrestrial just it. radio. Yeah, terrestrial radio. This, it, the United States is the only civilized country in the whole world where the terrestrial radio, the AM, FMs, do not pay artists for airplay. Wow. The only one. There's also like North Korea. I'm not going to get into the couple other ones, sing for, whatever. Uh, that. United States, they've been trying to push this. Actually, it started back in the 70s or 80s with Frank Sinatra. Why can't the performers get paid? The songwriters and publishers get paid for airplay. Why don't the performers? And it's been in Congress for years. Finally, the, the, the radio stations have been fighting this, of course, saying, oh, it's taxation, even though they've been paying the publishers and songwriters. And the really bad part is when our American artists go across the seas, they're not going to pay our American artists. Because they're saying, well, you don't pay our artists in the United States. Why should we pay your artists? By the way, there is a way around that. 
have somebody in another country handle that for you and act like a division so then they will pay them and they pay you. There's gotcha. answers to everything. You just need to, wow. to that's what education's all about. There are ways. But there, there's been in Congress, what the, the latest thing was, the uh, AMF and terrestrial station said, all right, we'll give you this tiny percent for, art, for the record companies and the artists. I hope some actually trickles down to the artists. But we want all cell phones to have FM radio on it. And this is starting a whole new other thing. Tune in for the next episode on that, folks. It's, it's been going up and back for several years in Congress. Who knows what's going to happen?